Hello everyone listening. Uh, it's me again, Monica Madwekwe. And with me today is a very important guest. All my guests are always important. Uh, with me is Mrs. Joyce Quigley Bajibo, who is the executive director of SHED in Liberia. Madam Bajibo, thank you for being my guest today. Thank you for inviting me here. It's a privilege. I'm honored to be here. Excellent. So let's start with the first question, an icebreaker. Could you tell us a little bit about you? You know, what makes Joyce tick? Hmm. I think uh, professionally, what makes me tick as a person and tick, I mean to say motivated, you know, build momentum in me to do what I do is to see change in my community in the society and in Liberia at large. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, you know, you came highly recommended uh, by one of the, uh, a very important person in Liberia. He told me about the excellent work uh, SHED is doing and how you're leading this initiative. So again, I'm very honored to have you. Um, let's talk about SHED. Um, what does SHED stand for? And what does SHED do? And what is SHED's philosophy? Okay, uh, SHED uh, stands for Serving Humanity for Empowerment and Development. So uh, SHED is a national organization in Liberia, but out of Finnish Church Aid Mission to Liberia. Uh, SHED was established by the long-serving staff of Finn Church Aid and empowered and supported by Finn Church Aid to continue the work mm -hmm. that Finnish Church Aid organization did in Liberia in the past 10 years uh, before departure in 2018. And Shell has remained a vibrant partner to that organization, that international organization, since its uh, evolution till now. And we are continuing the work that Finn Church has been doing in Liberia for years. Mm -hmm. uh, Shell's uh, philosophy is mainly uh, what we stand for action for human dignity. Yes. So our mission is a uh, sustainable action for human empowerment. And we are supporting our, the, our target group is uh, vulnerable youth and women. Um, the, I like the philosophy concerning human dignity because sometimes our people, as you know, those of us in Africa, sometimes we lack some of the basic things, you know, basic things that can help one live a simple and you know, dignified life. So I'm really glad to hear about Shed's philosophy, really focusing on human dignity. And you talked about um, some of the work you're doing, you know, for the rural people. I know that you have a very, very strong footprint when it comes to food security. You have a dedicated food security program. So let's discuss um, that program in detail. What is the program about? What do you try to achieve through this uh, food security program? Okay, thank you very much. It's an important question because our food security program is one of the major pillars of our work at the moment. So in the food security program, we are focusing on poultry production. We will expand later, but uh, as shared, it's still a new organization in the mm -hmm description that uh, we moved from the international organization structure to a national organization structure. Though we have a huge capacity, but uh, our structure is still new. So we want to focus uh, uh, time by time according to the improvement that we want to make. So from this beginning, we are only focusing now on the poultry production, the poultry sector. Share wants to lead the poultry sector in Liberia in support of the food security to Liberia. Okay, and, so go ahead, please. Go and, ahead. Yes. And under that uh, poultry sector and the food security program that we are running, we have like three components under the poultry sector. We are doing the poultry farming itself, and then we are growing corn, doing corn farming to support the poultry for the chicken feed, and then we are also doing vegetable production with uh, women farmers. Mm. 
Yes. Okay. And um, why poetry? Like, is this something that perhaps you will see a, a big market for for Liberia? Currently, is poetry is it being imported into the country, or this is an area that you see, you know, households really being interested in? Why the focus on? Yes, poetry because uh, we have nutritional issues in Liberia. And you know, egg is a very good nutritional source. So, and just like you mentioned during your narration now, during your questioning, uh, poetry up to now, approximately 90% of the poetry products on our market is imported. Mm. Yes. The poultry products we have here, the eggs, you know, the, the chicken as a meat and everything imported into Liberia. So like 90% of what Liberia population is consuming now is imported. And in many of these cases, some of those uh, poultry products even brought to Liberia are not even in a useful stage. Some is, uh, have expired, like the eggs. Eggs have an active shell life of uh, 30 to 40 days. And before the ship from abroad is landed in Liberia, it takes more than 40 days. So before the egg is here already, it's preserved through chemicals and other things which are not good for human consumption. But our population has to take it in because that's what we have. What is the, the, the percentage of this, um, your food security uh, program, the poultry section, do you have an idea of how much it might um, offset the importation? What percentage of, you know, how would you reduce the importation? Okay, at the moment, uh, on this project, we are, uh, our focus is to cut 50% of that importation to start with in three years. Okay. And then after that, yes, we will reassess. And currently, are there any government policies or, you know, funds in place that may help you achieve this 50%? Because, you know, there are two ways. Either the government will have some programs in place that will encourage, you know, local farmers in Liberia to reduce uh, the government's import by encouraging your your products, or the eggs you you sell are at a lower price compared to what is imported. Then people will go for your eggs instead of the ones that are imported. What what are the initiatives or strategies in place to make sure that or in three years, you, the X from your program, from SHED's program, is able to cut down imports by 50%. Yes, uh, right now we are doing heavy publicity and we are in connection with the Ministry of Agriculture also. And uh, the minister now, uh, we have a support, we have good listening ears, you know, she listens to us and she's willing to support. She has been in the sector, in the agriculture sector, in the private sector NGO before moving to the ministry as a minister. So she okay. understands the challenges that we are facing. Uh, and we as the Poetry Association of Liberia have been in discussion with her. She has come to our program. She has acknowledged the issues at hand. So I think government only interest now is that uh, sustainability of our produce, continuous availability of the eggs that we are producing on the market. Uh, right now, even as a stimulus from them, we get duty free and on the eggs materials, uh, there are some level of tax that is waived. So uh, all of that is to encourage farmers, but you cannot encourage farmers without capital to put the properties in place for pro uh, before production. Yeah. We were just privileged to gain funding from abroad from the German BMZ to be able to establish this with all of the value chains at least uh, mm -hmm. considerably met at the moment. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we see that the ministry, the government is willing to listen, but we have to do our part to make sure that the, the product is available on the market. Like the eggs is available, like what we are doing now. 
And we are also uh, doing awareness with our population, big marketplaces, informing them of the nutritional uh, intake, the nutritional component, importance of the eggs, so that people are not only going for what is cheap, but you are also going for what is healthy. Mm -hmm. Yes. So those are what those kinds of things that we are doing at the moment. And we intend to engage the Ministry of Agriculture further. Once our production reaches, we want to reach like 25,000 layers birds in country. Once we are producing to that level, it's a good percentage that we can begin uh, taking on other markets outside of Monrovia. Then we can engage the ministry. But right now we are in several supermarkets. We have our own outlet in a major market in Monrovia in red light. And, you know, we are selling and it, the price is good. Mm. And people are willing to buy the locally produced eggs. Yeah. Even what uh, Shed is doing now, we are not the farms that we make. We only support the farms. We only support the women farmers. We support them with technical support, machinery, and also trainings so that they know how to properly uh, use the modern methods and use our mechanized machine to make bigger farms. So we use tractor, we make the tractor available to them. We uh, give them a, techni a technical person, a technician who is working along with them on their various farms and we clear the land for them and they do the rest of it. All we are telling the farmers is we have the market for the corn. So we are only supporting the farmers and like you rightly said, we in negotiate and agree with them at a, with a, for a farm gate price before even this process. We sign an MOU with each farmer so that they sell the corn back to us. So all we are doing is giving them the support. The farms are not for shit. The farms are also empowering these women and they sell to us, they take the income and better their lives. Mm. So I can imagine, yeah, I can imagine as the farms, you know, they expand, as the farmers also learn better practices like, you know, climate resilient agriculture, their productivity increases and even after they supply a certain, the fraction of uh, corn that you've signed with them, I'm sure some of it is even left for them to go to the market with and sell and even increase their income that way. Yes, yes. They do the fresh corn because we require of them a single lady, one acre. Okay. That's what we want at the moment to focus on and support you properly. So the skill that they get in the program, they take it and they apply it and they make other farms and they supply like we are talking about the use of the corn. We eat a lot of fresh corn in Liberia. So they also grow the fresh corn and take it to the open market. They make additional money from the training, the skills that they have gotten from the training conducted by our technician. So they use the proper planting distance and they have more use and things like that. They weed in a timely manner. So they have more corn yield. So when they have more, they don't leave it on the tree. The ones that is not for the farm that we are making, they eat some of the fresh corn. They also sell some which brings the extra income. Yeah, I think it's good to focus at some point, focus on, you know, making sure the nation itself is well fed. Yes. That the people in the country are consuming most of what you're producing, even before you start thinking of selling outside Liberia. Um, that is a good strategy. Liberia did very well managing the Ebola crisis. Do you, do you think that somehow the challenges that came from Ebola has sort of informed and informed your strategy in terms of, you know, if you look at your strategy, you're making sure that your supply chain is well, well protected. You're not depending on imports, corn from outside, everything sort of, you know, organized within Liberia. Do you think the Ebola crisis may have contributed to some of this strategy in terms of informing you of how to make sure your supply chain is well, you know, protected? You are 100% correct. Uh, because uh, before we reached this point, it was from the Ebola crisis that we had to bring in a consultant to do a second feasibility study on the entire poultry value chain. Uh, 
uh, we experienced a heavy loss during the Ebola period in 2014. At that time, SHED was not existing yet. We were still with the international organization, the Finnish Church Aid. And at that time, Finnish Church Aid was giving chickens, these layers to the women farmers, and we were supporting them. <clears throat> but we depended on importation of the feed from Guinea. So mm -hmm. we were bringing corn from Guinea and Cote d'Ivoire. So during Ebola, the borders, the borders became closed. So mm -hmm. we could not bring in corn. So the chickens were struggling. They started to feed the chickens with rice. And then chickens started to die. They could not, they, they, they could not take in the rice and there are other components we put in. They were all not available. There were no medication. So they, they, these farmers had to put the chicken on free range and then Finchers and now agree with them that they can sell the layers. So they had to sell the layers and they lost the entire process because we could not uh, go the full cycle of the project. So it's from that background that we uh, Finnish Church and hired another consultant to do a study on the chain and then the result was that if corn is not produced in Liberia, the poultry sector is not sustainable. So you are you are just you are just correct. I think this um, you know the lockdowns it's not just the port the poultry example you've given us is just one angle, but even we're looking at the manufacturing supply chain in Africa, the fact that we are very dependent outside Africa or other countries, then it really makes uh, the, the countries, the, the the markets, the region vulnerable. So see, looking at um, Ebola, looking at the current COVID-19, I can imagine that when COVID-19 came, the impact was the shock from the impact of COVID-19 less than what you had experienced with Ebola because you were prepared for it. Liberia was prepared for it. Would you like to touch on that? Yes. Yes, uh, Liberia was prepared health-wise. Health-wise. You know, our system was in place because Ebola had passed and our public health sector had put a lot of things in place to absorb any shock of such a kind. So in terms of our health sector, uh, you know, Corona could be taken care of to an extent with the system already put in place. But in terms of agriculture, uh, much had not been done. Yes, at the coming of uh, Corona or even Ebola. It only exposed the challenges that we had in our agriculture sector. Just as we are speaking of the eggs now in the poultry sector, a lot of other supplies on the Liberian market, even down to pepper, mm. the hot pepper that we eat, the tomatoes, we are still importing from Guinea. So when the borders were closed, uh, even rice, we, our country's stable food is rice. We depend heavily on rice, but uh, much of the rice that we take in is from outside. So importation was slow, but then people bought the food from the market, saving it for themselves, those who could afford, and then uh, scarcity became the order and costs went high, as we know. So uh, it, it shows the kind of weaknesses we have in our agriculture yet, in our agriculture sector. So it exposed the problem we had even more because uh, we could not set in commodities, a certain food that we take in Liberia, we could not access it on our local market because they are still being imported. So I know that um, Liberia is very green. You have lots of arable lands, but hearing from you, obviously the agricultural sector is there's too much room for improvement in the agricultural sector. So what could you, what are the main challenges holding back? Now, this is not just in Liberia. There are many countries in Africa that has not been able to really move this agricultural sector forward. But for the case of Liberia, what would you say is the main factor holding back the sector? Hmm. The, the main factor in my view is uh, farmers are now well supported. 
and they have uh, real challenges at the grassroots level. Uh, they don't have access to loans to do some of the things they want to do to get some of the inputs that they want to get. We also have challenges with our farm to market rules, which help to discourage farmers because if a farmer invested so much into planting in the last planting season and because of bad road condition, the farmer could not sell uh, to make enough to cover his costs, even for the, yes, even for the investment. Mm -hmm. He will not be encouraged to plant in the next planting season, no matter the expertise he has. Mm -hmm. Then there is no storage and preservation facilities. These people are in rural areas and some of them who even are in urban areas, we don't have those kinds of facilities. There is no storage facility in our country. So they bring their goods, those who are close to the market, bring their goods to the market and when the goods are not taken from them in time, uh, their the goods spoil and they have to spare for, uh, sell for very minimum prices that will not be able to cover their costs. So it discouraged farmers from venturing continuously into agriculture. Mm. Yes. So you talked about the feeders road, the farm to market roads. Yes. How serious is the challenge here? How serious is it? It is very serious. It's one of the serious problems that Liberia has when it comes to agriculture and many other economic, you know, issues. Because when agriculture is supported, our economy will do well. All of these things that we are discussing also bring leakage to our economy. Mm. So yes, because what should be maintained in country, the, the, the money that should be circulated in our country is constantly being sent out for importation. So we are not gaining grounds in that direction. So farm to market road, the feeder roads you're talking about are major issues here. We have the issue everywhere in all of our counties, except maybe in few counties like uh, Nimba and Bong. And even in those places, we have the gravel roads. When there is heavy downpour of rain, like what we are having now, the roads are in bad condition. And farmers are, cannot access the market easily. So it's a a very grave problem and our government is aware of it because it's something that continues to come out and I think they're making roads their priority now but they have so many things to focus on. Of course, of course. Um, the challenge with assessing loans, is it because uh, the interest rates are high? What do you think, uh, what, what are the challenges farmers are facing when they go to banks to request for loans for agriculture? Yes, the interest rates are high, like you said, and also banks don't even want to trust the local farmers, the native Liberian farmers. They don't want to trust them. They only trust, you know, business, senior business people. But to trust a farmer where in other countries you have farmers bank and you have loan that government has arranged with other bilateral partners or donors, to be able to support you know, farming is not easily accessible in Liberia. And when a farmer goes to any of the commercial bank, they are not willing, they need heavy collaterals, which mm. the farmers don't have. And even microfinance banks, the same difficulty. Interest bank, uh, like you started, the interest rate very high. Yeah. We have the access bank here. But farmers don't want to dare to uh, take access bank loan because the interest rate is very high and before they complete the farming season and sell, they are not able to pay access them bank back. And even what access bank is uh, willing to give to them is just a minimal, it's very small to be able to do something substantial in terms of farming. Mm. Yes, because they gave you according to the collateral that you have to present. Mm. Yeah. That challenges. So tell me, in terms of, I know there are some, there are a lot of programs, you know, multilateral development banks, they have agricultural programs in Liberia. Can you give an example of any program that is currently working to address some of these challenges and what do you think we need to do more? 
what 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 needs to be done you know to take those initiatives further to really move the needle i think what we need more is we need more of the government buy-in we need more support from the government because these farmers uh, when uh, sometimes a collaborative approach brings success to most of these things like discussing fundings and things like that when people are working in consortium, when they have the support of their national government, uh, partners and donors will listen easily. And sincerity also and true commitment is what we need. Mm. And some good examples too. Mm. Like what Shed is doing now is gaining momentum. We are able to access grants because uh, the donors and other partners are seeing the result out of shares initiative. So in Liberia, much has been said. UN has worked here for several years. There were in several international organizations here for many years also after the war. So uh, there is a fatigue, a kind of donor fatigue, okay. you know, private sector funding to Liberia. So people want to see tangible results before they can invest. Mm. Mm. Those are very strong words. I mean, you've said some very, a lot of words that I'm really chewing on. Like, you've talked about the fact that we've had so much interventions from the international community, international organizations, but yet there's the fatigue, you know, in terms of, you know, the private sector acting with all this participation we need results in order for us to put our money in. And now I'm asking myself, why, why are the results not showing or why are the results not enough? Yeah, there are many factors to that. There are many, there are many factors to that. Uh, the, the, the factor that uh, people after the war, there were a lot of funding coming here, a lot of interventions from different people also how the fundings were coordinated, the mindset of our people receiving the funding then, uh, all of that play part in why there is no result. Because, because people from that time uh, took it like UN was here to give money, is UN money, you don't really need to show anything much. All UN wants is that you are okay, you can feel yourself at your own little level. But mm. now we have graduated from that emergency stage to a development stage where we have to take responsibility of our own development and advancement of our economy and our lives as Liberians. Mm. So uh, it is, it's, there are two different dynamics there. So people, some people are still in the past mode, the emergency relief mode. Mm. Yes, and now we are in development mode. Development agencies want to see what you have done with their money. The reporting criteria are not like reporting in, even in emergency. In emergency, the procedures are very light. What is expected of those institutions and personalities involved are very minor. But right now, they want to see tangible results mm. and for the transformation of the mindset of people from one stage to another is a process and not an event. Yes. Yeah. Very, very wise words. Uh, you've spoken a lot of wisdom and um, I agree with you that yes, there was a time where you had the war, but now it's time to build, it's time to grow, it's time for, you know, financial um, accountability and you know, results, results that will attract more more of the private sector because at the end of the day the question is for the private sector is if i put my money in can i get you know can i get it back and yes. with some added um, money on top so that's where the world needs to move so, and i like the part about is it we need to change the mindset it's about re-education in terms of how to use whatever resources you get so you've talked about uh, you know the kind of change that we need to see in Liberia and I just want to know do you have any final advice on on how to really bring about this change you've covered a lot but if you have a few more things to say that would be good okay 
I think from a side, what I believe in and from my own assessment of our society, uh, what would bring this change is uh, our belief in ourselves to make it happen. We as Liberians, many Liberians depend on outside support. And many people have the mindset that it has to come from outside uh, abroad before it can cause true transformation. We have to begin to believe in ourselves that we have the resources here. We still need to tap on resources from out there, but with little that we can start here, it can attract so much. And before we know it, we can build on it and transform our own society. We should not always think that people have to come from outside to have impact on us. We should be willing to make that impact, to take the lead, to, to begin to make the change that we want to see at our own little levels. That's the only way I think. Well done. Okay then, so thank you so much for sharing all these you've shared with us. I think um, there's no one who watched this video that will not head to your website. So I'm going to have your the link of your website, you know, in the article so that people can see what you're talking about. And I know that you're also looking at raising some more funds yes. uh, for your program. So I think those who are listening, Shed has shown accountability and how results can be achieved. So I do wish you all the best with your program. And I believe that just as you've said, people are attracted to good results. And I can imagine that Shed will have more people, you know, funding your programs to make sure that what you're doing in Liberia continues. Well done. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Thank you for having me. And I'm very grateful for this opportunity. My pleasure.